Hello there, and welcome to More Movies Podcast, episode 55. Hi, this is Car, um, what number are we? Five, five. Car 55. Um, we're in a truck. <laughs> this is the podcast where we like to talk about all the movies we've been watching recently, any movie news, anything we like, really. You know, you could get anything. It's a mixed bag. It's a smorgasbord. My name is Greg Fisher. His name is David Roberts. How are you doing this week? Oh, Dave. Ah, pretty damn well, sir. Pretty damn well. A new year, new everything. Uh, Chinese how are you, New Year sir? today. It's Chinese New Year. Chinese year, New year, year of the Rabbit. So you know, <laughs> we're going to be uh, in for something new. I sit hopping around at all. I'm doing all right. <laughs> you're doing all right. Hopefully, you watching this podcast or listening, you're doing all right too. Let's get into it. Okay, so this week we are going to be talking about two movies primarily. First movie, Glass Onion. Second movie, The Menu. Dave, why don't you start us off? Let's talk about Glass Onion first. Glass Onion, wow. This, of course, came out, uh, was it Christmas Eve, I think? Something like that. Um, It was the big Netflix film of of, of the Christmas period, huge. Um, Of course, it's the sequel to Knives Out. Um, which came out in uh, 2019, I believe. Um, Ryan Johnson. Um, it's Ryan Johnson. R- Ryan Johnson. I always get that one wrong. Um, Ryan. I don't know anything about Ryan. I don't care. It's because he spells it a far ass way with an I in it. Like, he you used to see in the Y for Rye, but there we go. Exactly, anyway. exactly. But, uh, of course, Knives Out, very good film, very popular film. Uh, everybody loved that. Um, well, most people. Most people loved that, yeah. Um, with the uh, ever-brilliant Daniel Craig. It's Benoit Blanc, the private investigator, with a, a very strange accent. Um but deep, deep we all came South to love. accent, <laughs> Louisiana. <laughs> Very different from what we're used to uh, from from Mister Bond. But um, yeah, obviously that was a big hit. So then we we were told after the success that Netflix had commissioned uh, two sequels. The first one, of course, just come out. We're about to talk about it, Glass Onion. Um, so uh, we're joined this time by uh, Edward Norton, Kate Hudson, uh, Leslie Odom Jr. Janelle Monet, Catherine Hahn, uh, Jessica Henwick, Madeline Klein, and my favourite, Dave Batista, of course. Of course. The animal. <laughs> Dave Batista. Dave Batista. You, is it, I, I take it he's your favourite because of the wrestling? Because of the wrestling, yeah. Okay. I think also he's become like, you know, we've had people like Hulk Hogan and John Cena have made the and The Rock made their way over into uh, the movie business, and he's the one that uh, is actually good at it. <laughs> well, I only know him as an actor, and obviously, um, you know, the Guardians of the Galaxy. He's hilarious yeah. in it. He was really good at as a small role in Blade Runner twenty forty nine as well. I got yeah. time. I got time for him. He's pretty cool. He's a pretty cool guy, and uh, yeah, so. That's he, our cast this no time. He's not Hulk Hogan, but... <laughs> what you gonna do, brother? It's wrestling legend Hollywood Hulk Hogan? Yeah, so this time... Uh, so in the last film we were in uh, in America, it was a murder in the family in a, in a house uh, in middle America. This time we are taken to a private island owned by Edward Norton's character, Um uh, something is amiss, but uh, it's sold to us in the beginning that they're going because this rich uh, tech entrepreneur, you'd say, uh, has decided he's going to do a murder mystery dinner. And to make it all so realistic, he's invited the, the world's greatest detective, Benoit Blanc, uh, along for the ride. And they all turn up, and obviously it's a island of um, opulence. It's all ridiculous. They've got... Uh, all the self-eating pools, swimming pools, big glass dome, which is referred to as the glass onion, as his uh, kind of main house. Um, and everything is there as you want to. And all the people you uh, meet on the main are not the nicest of people. Um, they're all uh, rich and uh, famous and successful, but not in a positive way. You know, they've... they've selfish they've, people. Very selfish people, very... Um, manipulative people um you know and then the film obviously 
unfolds from there? With Knives Out, it was it was praised for being like um, a murder and mystery film, but turning on its head a bit, doing something slightly different with it. And I think he's tried to do that again with this, but um, I'm not sure personally whether it worked as well this time round. Although it wasn't terrible. It wasn't a bad film. No. Um, but for me, it didn't really measure up to Knives Out um, in that sense. It was a little bit more... Um, I mean, that whole, like you say, the guy is Edward Norton's character. He's like this, he's supposed to be a sort of like Elon Musk type, isn't he? This kind of rich yeah. billionaire tech guy that everybody hates really, but he's got so much money and power, he can do anything he wants. And he's having like a murder mystery dinner that actually ends up being a murder mystery dinner. So again, it's trying yeah. to be meta. It's trying to sort of play on the idea itself. I'm not sure that if that pulled off as well this time, but it was still enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, it, it totally agreed that it was not as good as the original, and but I never really expected it to be. You know, very rare in circumstance do you get the sequel being as good as the original. And I thought the original was a really special film. Yeah, I um, liked it, was, it a lot. Um, it was unique and different, and uh, I guess more than anything, it was refreshing because most of the murder mystery type of films we get are stuff we've already been over. You know, we've. We've done the Agatha Christie novels, Ad Nauseam, you know, Murder on the Orient Express and stuff. They've done recent ones of those. Mm. Um, and so kind of you know what's happening, so it's no longer a, a mystery because, you know, we, yeah. and you don't get many of them. So to have a new story, a new narrative that you yeah. don't know anything about going into it, I thought was really interesting. And, of course, yeah, he did do something very different with it. I thought this was very good, though, because, as you say, he, he does try and do something different... And, and as he did in the first one, he, he does something different here. I, it feels like he almost inverses mm. the whole purpose of a murder mystery. He, you know, it's not a murder mystery at all. It's a conspiracy. Yeah. And um, he has not been invited there. He's been brought there under false pretenses. Um, Who, Benoit Blanc? Benoit Blanc. Uh, and it's actually to catch. Uh, Edward Norton's character out um, and so the kind of whole operation of it being oh this isn't a, 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 a murder mystery at all and he's not very clever he's an idiot you know and <laughs> the way they reverse it all in the end um, I thought was really different and really interesting it wasn't um, it wasn't a repeat of what we just had no that's uh, good it, it's good in that sense that it wasn't a repeat he didn't go to you know, do the same thing, like you said, a house, a family, and all the rest of it. It was something different uh, completely. I thought Janelle Monet was excellent in it. I mean, that's the big thing, isn't it? That's the twist in it is that, you know, she's supposed to be um, one of the crowd because they're all this little gang that have known each other for years, aren't they? Yeah. And uh, for one reason or another, they're not so friendly anymore, but he's brought them back together. And Janelle Monet's character, she's supposed to be this this certain member of the gang and it turns out spoiler alert here we go it's uh she's actually the twin sister it's a bit like oh yeah okay yeah and none of them realize until it's like oh it's too late sort of thing too late yeah um so that was you know that was the little twisty bit and it, i thought she was brilliant i haven't seen her in anything before i didn't no. really know about it but she was really good in it and and it was kind of the same for me with anna Darmus. i didn't really know her before knives out and i thought she was great in it it was good to have that sort of character there um, I don't like Edward Norton very much, but I've got to say, I, I, I thought he was quite good in this. So, you yeah, know, there's a positives there. I'm a big fan of Edward Norton, uh, to be honest. Uh, you know, I've, I've loved his stuff over the years. Um, he always plays psychopaths very well. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's great in this, probably because he's got that edge of, he feels a bit sociopathic in this. He's not, um, not normal straight from the off, um. He seems to do that well. Yeah, that sort of, you know, he's almost like, take, like I say, taking the piss out of people like um, Elon Musk and stuff. And he was, yeah. good at, he was good at doing that. It was easy to sort of dislike him. Um, again, Daniel Craig, absolutely brilliant. He really, you can tell he really enjoys it. The costumes, yeah. the, the, the opulence of everything, you know, the kind of like sunny, it's almost very Bond-like in it, you know, it's like a sort of, yes. you know, a hot Mediterranean island or wherever it is that they are. And, um, you know, you've got the, the, the funny outfits with the, um, 
pants the costumes. Suits, that that yeah. stripey one, you know. The... That's hilarious. <laughs> but it, yeah, the pools, the, you know, the the whole thing. Batista was hilarious in it. This whole thing about him always having his gun, even when he's got his <laughs> skimpy little speedos on, he's got this holster with a gun. It's just <laughs> yeah. Like, and how excited he plays as a character. He is like the little kid of the group, isn't he? He's just like, oh, yeah, we get to go to the special island. Yeah. Um, all so excited. Um, like you great, said, they're um, all horrible characters, aren't they? All quite selfish in a way. So yes. in a way, you, you you want them all to get murdered. I mean, Kate Hudson, she's the typical sort of uh, it girl or former it girl that's completely, you know, fatuous and, and shallow and only really cares about herself and how she looks and how she comes across and, you know, these kind of characters in it is, is what you need in a murder mystery because you, you think uh... it reminded me a bit of The Forgiven um, which I talked about in the last video the Ray Fiennes movie from last year yeah you know they turn up at this party and all of the people are just the most distasteful bunch of people um, and these characters aren't as bad as they are in The Forgiven they're really distasteful people yeah. but I think the same here you've got people who these are this is not a likeable bunch no um but I think that that's what makes a murder mystery really good in some ways because then you're kind of distrustful of all of them and kind of, yeah. well, which one is it going to be, you know, because they've all got yeah. something to grind here. Um, it looked beautiful, you know, as these films uh, do. The last film was great. This mm. looked fantastic. It helps that, of course, it's on a tropical island somewhere. Yeah, in the you need a great place. setting like that. Yeah, I mean, last time it's kind of snowy, wintry kind of setting, so he's gone the opposite. It's summer, it's yeah. open, it's blue skies, blue seas, and all that. So you know, you can appreciate the uh, aesthetic choices. I liked all that stuff with the puzzle that they all get sent at the start. You yes. know, they've got to figure out uh, the the puzzle to 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 find out what the invite is. Um, a and bit the... a bit convoluted, but that's the whole point, isn't it? You know. Yeah, but also the fantastic uh, opening scene with Angela Lansbury on Zoom yeah, um, yeah. playing a murder mystery game with uh, Benoit Blanc. I thought that was there fantastic. Were some great cameos. Uh, Hugh Grant as well. Hugh Grant at the door, we were, yeah. Uh, Kath and I were saying to each other, do you think there was like a sort of um, insinuation there that Hugh Grant's character and Benoit Blanc are... Uh, are partners. Partners, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Definitely, I think there. I think it is. Yeah, uh, that's what I, I thought. We, we took it a little bit like that. I was like, ah, oh, there's, this there's been some discussion online about it. Some people complained about it, as they usually do in these kind of situations. But uh, I think it was definitely it was definitely pushing towards that, and I think that's brilliant. So I mean, definitely, it was you funny. Know, yeah, uh, it was like a yeah. real good campy sort of joke, actually. Uh, it um, was. And after seeing you know Hugh Grant in Paddington Two and stuff, he can do no wrong. After that, it's like no. <laughs> let's have more Hugh Grant in these campy kind of crazy roles. <laughs> And to just see him at the door in that, we were like, ah, brilliant. Well, I'm not sure that we can offer you that, but we can, of course, offer you oodles of fun. And, and, and anyone who hasn't seen Paddington and Paddington 2 on a side note, go watch it. Damn right. Now. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, I thought it was really good. It wasn't as good as the original, of no. course. Um, I think Knives Out has a special place, but yeah. as a nice little sequel, you're doing something a bit different, kind of... For me, reversing the idea of it and sitting there on Christmas Eve, yeah, popped it on, bit of fun, lots of action and adventure and uh, uh, mystery and silliness and jokes and uh, and all of that, all wrapped up in it. I thought, what a, what a great film, what a great little bit of fun. I'm afraid Mr. Cody is, is dead. Oh, joke! <laughs> Brings us on, talking of Ray Fiennes earlier, to our second film we want to talk about this week, which is The Menu. Um, Mark Mylod directed very similar in a sense to Glass Onion in, in my book in that it all takes place on an island uh, it's quite a, in a sense a, a little bit of a bottle movie you know you're only pretty much in the one space okay a little bit outside like with Glass Onion in the gardens they do a similar thing here but yeah. it's all concentrated within this restaurant on an island that they all get brought to so there's a lot of similarities going on um, you got Ray Fiennes as this uh, the head chef and and his crew around him, and you've got all these different diners that have been invited to the island, and they're all different people. One of them's like a food critic. Um, there's a there's a former sort of Hollywood actor. There's a bunch of guys that are um, investors, young you know super rich uh, money heads, investors and stuff. 
And, um, you know, there's the setup anyway. Um, sounds a little bit like what? People just going to an island, they're just going to eat what's on the menu. But obviously, there's a lot more to it than that. Anya Taylor-Joy is the uh, kind of the main star of this one. So again, we've got that female lead in a sense, like we did with Janelle Monet or Anna de Armas in, in the other two films we've just been talking about, the Brian Johnson ones. So I thought a lot of similarities in that sense that this one's not so much a murder mystery, it's more of a um, a murder rampage. <laughs> and you kind of know what's going on throughout it. But it is it. a mystery as well, because the mystery is, what is the meal about? Yes, there is an element of mystery to it. So, you know, again, in that sense, it's it, there's, there's similarities. And, and especially in the way you just don't know what's going to happen next. And she's the one that sort of like the odd one out. She shouldn't really be there. Um, so, you know, she's the character we kind of invest in to say, you know, we we hope she survives. But again, another similarity is all of these other characters, John Leguizamo is the movie star and all these um, uh, diners, so to speak. They're kind of like a lot of them are horrible people as well. Yeah. For example, Nicholas Holt, who's took her on the date, at first, you think they're a couple and they've been together a long time. And, you know, um, the more the more he opens his mouth, the more, the more you hate him. He's just like, what an absolute <laughs> shitbag this guy is. But he's obsessed with food, isn't he? And he's obsessed yeah. with Ray Fine's character um, and has been over the years. Um, it also reminded me in some ways of Pig in the sense that it was a movie that celebrated really high-end food. Yes, Obviously, nothing like it in terms of its, uh, you know, um, genre. It was, you know, Pig was, you know, what it was. It was a great film. Um, this is not on that level, but it <laughs> certainly has that similarity of celebrating food. And um, and the ingredients. It celebrates the, the ingredients, yes. I think. And, you know, that's... the way you get the uh, menu up. Exactly. Yeah. The, you know, but as I say, it, it uh, for me, it held a lot of similarities to the Glass Onion film in 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 the ways I've already mentioned, but I personally enjoyed this ten times more, um, possibly because it was uh, not a sequel. It was more of an original film, you know. Um, it was a lot darker. Yes. Um, but I, you know, it was like black comedy. I was laughing out loud watching it. Some of the scenes in it, some of the things that happened, some of the things the characters say. Some things that happened to him, it was, there was moments it was bizarre. It was almost surreal in some ways. Like I'm thinking where he dips that guy into the ocean with the wings, you know, <laughs> all this kind of crazy shit going on. And it does keep you guessing for the first half of the movie. You are thinking, what the fuck is going on here? You know, it's like yeah. Ray Fiennes is obviously just a nutter. But to what degree you don't find out until everything starts to uh, unfurl as you go along. Um, Ray Fiennes, I always got time for. I think he's one of our best actors. Absolutely. Um, and in this, I just thought it was absolutely hilarious because he's always better when he's playing that slightly tweaked, unhinged, unhinged yeah. character. <laughs> obviously, Voldemort. Obviously, uh, you know, more seriously, the guy in Schindler's List and stuff. But um, in this, you could have a bit more fun with it because you don't have to be quite serious. And um, it was just went from one thing to the, to the other. Anyway, tell me what you thought of the menu. Uh, pretty much exactly along the lines of, of yourself. I mean, I, to me, this was crazy. <laughs> um, really, really crazy. I mean, it started slow, I felt. The, the first um, 10, 15 minutes, I was like, what? I don't really get what, where it's going with this. But I think once you get into the restaurant, yeah. it gets going and you're like, uh. and then it's almost like, because of course they break this film up uh, by the courses they're being served, and uh, we have a little, little title card of this is what they're getting, and it's all introduced. So it's almost like little um, little scenes, uh, almost uh, kind of old French like uh, cinema, you know, little pieces or or kind of classical Hollywood. These little vignettes, vignettes of things, yeah, yeah. and um, courses as they say, and, and, and they say they call them courses, yeah, and. As each one is served, uh, they, uh, you know, something crazier is unveiled uh, within what is happening, and you just go, "Oh my god!" And yeah. it gets more and more bizarre, and it is just you're laughing at the most absurd. I mean, you've you've got to find the satire in there because it's very, 
satirical on a class level. Yeah. Um, at the pomposity and ridiculousness of what these people are doing. Yeah. The and diners. obviously the diners and, and, and Ray Fine's character has clearly taken the piss with his uh, courses in this macabre way. It's like uh, Gordon <laughs> Ramsay crossed with uh, Norman Bates. What? <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> and and the way it kind of blows out and you're like, this is, this is genius because it, it's what yeah. we think um, yeah. of, of, of this ridiculousness you know it's not food as one of them says is it it's uh it's just it's part of a story and what's, yeah. he, what's he what's he trying to say kind of thing and you're thinking oh no yeah he says something like you're not here to eat no yeah it's, you're, you're here, here to, to taste. taste yeah yeah but um <laughs> i mean that's the, another similarity is that like i said all of the characters in the in the rest in the restaurant are horrible people you know yeah. the the woman who's um a food critic, you can tell she's a complete snob and she's ruined people's careers by the, uh, certain reviews she's given. I mean, I thought John Leguizamo was hilarious in it because he's playing this sort of bloated movie star guy that was a bit past his best. But yeah, I thought the way he played it and that character was quite hilarious because he was he seemed like the only one of them that said, you know, <laughs> we probably deserve this. Because <laughs> yeah. cause that, again, spoiler alert, that's the thing. They all start to get uh, bumped off and it's and there's like... You know, when you get to the crunch, it's like you're all you're not. None of you're gonna leave this island alive. You're all gang. You're all gonna die tonight as part of the menu. Yeah. But obviously, that takes the time for that to be revealed, which is is played out brilliantly. I thought. You know, like you said, I think I agree with you as well. That first ten minutes, you are thinking, "Yeah, come on." But I thought Glass Onion was a bit like that. You know, it's mm. like, "Oh, come on, get off the boat, get on with it." Yeah, get, right, yeah. Get to the crunch. We're all hungry here. But as you said. You know, that first 10 minutes is gone, you get down to it, you're starting to think, what the hell is going on here? And it's all it's all told through uh, Anya Taylor-Joy's eyes because she doesn't know what the hell's going on, but she's suspicious of it all. Everybody else is there and like, oh, this is going to be the greatest food we've ever et- ate and it's going to be the um, this a magnificent night, but she's just like, yeah, I don't even, I thought I want to go and have a, a cigarette. Yeah. There was um, one scene I thought was hilarious where... Uh, once she goes um, trying to investigate the chef's quarters, his house, because she's looking for a radio and she's looking for, you know, call call for help. Call for help, And yeah. she gets um, followed by uh, the chef's number one, um, you know, um, kitchen staff. Um, and and she's like confronts Anya and Taylor-Joy in the place that you will not replace me. And she's like this hard-ass Asian almost like assassin ninja killer trying to kill her. And Anya Taylor-Joy is not, she's as skinny as a rake and she doesn't yeah. look like she can, you know, defend herself and be like a sort of rough and tumble. And that fight scene I thought was all the better for it because it, you did think uh, she's going to get murdered here because yeah. she's no match for this like <laughs> focused, trained Asian assassin who was going to absolutely tear her apart. And um, they and I, I appreciate that they didn't try to turn her into some sort of like kick-ass no. character like they do, you know, uh, sometimes. And she looked like she was getting battered around the kitchen there. That it, it, was, to, it was quite funny to see that. It was funny to see her throwing her skinny ass around. It was like, yeah. Jesus, you're going to break in half at this yeah. time more than the floor, yeah. you know. Uh, she was brilliant. I mean, I think I thought Nicholas Holt played his part perfectly because he's yeah. kind of got that, you know, cute look, you know, young guy. But then every time, as you say, he opens his mouth, <clears throat> you think you're a dick. Well, I was thought <laughs> he often plays a lot of characters that kind of you don't like anyway. You know. Yeah. I mean, even with about a boy years ago, back going back to Hugh Grant again, that there was that about a boy, and he was Nicholas Holt's first big thing because he was the kid in it. And yeah. Even in that, it's quite annoying. <laughs> Wanted to slap him, you know, and 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 he's kind of done a thing about playing those sort of characters. So uh, it did I, remind me of his role in Skins. The kind of yeah, he he look he looks cute, but yeah, it opens his mouth and you think you mm. you're not very nice. Um, the we had of course the couple uh, the couple who were in the restaurants the the old married couple. Um, yeah, they were funny as, and yeah. that was the moment the film really turned for me when. Um, Spoiler alert! Uh, the, they cut his uh, finger off. Oh uh, yeah, Reed Burney. The last time we watched him was in that mass. Do you remember? Uh, 
Yes. Oh, he, great he was, film. He was the, he was the um, one of the uh, guys one in of the that. Diamonds. The one that wasn't Jason Isaacs. How dare you? It also reminded me uh, when I was watching, particularly uh, you got that moments where the um, one of the sous chefs uh, basically sacrifices themselves in the restaurant. That's one of the courses on the white sheet. And um, my mind was flickering to um, American Psycho um, yeah. and kind of the, you know, going, what's what's going on here? What's real? This is it all becoming a bit um, yeah odd, you know. But uh, it's so hilarious at the same time in terms of d- they are um, they are thinking that this is some pompous show. This is oh, this is part of the, part of the story. Yeah. yeah, and we'll find out what it's all about. It's not real, and then it's mm-hmm. like, well, it is real because you had your finger jumped off. Yeah, yeah. and once so. they, once that dawns on them and they realise they're not getting out, you know, and you know the financier guys try to buy their way out of it, and it's like there's yeah. no chance you're going to be able yeah. to do that. John Leguizamo thinks he's going to get out of it. That scene where the um, they call in the Coast Guard guy, and he he's like, "Oh, I, I recognise you. You starred in one of my favourite films." And he's all like, "Yeah, yeah," but then that's all part of the ruse as well. And every you know every step they get to, it's like you know there's that bit where they line them up outside and they say, "Guys, you've got thirty seconds or whatever it is, or a minute to get off the island, and if you can make it." You know, we'll let you go free, and they all start legging it. I'll leave their wives behind and everything. Yeah. So- sorry, man. It's like, what a bunch of shit. All apart from Nicholas Holt, who's like, I'm not missing the next course because he's yeah. so obsessed with the food. So obsessed with it. But um, brilliant film. I, uh, for me personally, I enjoyed it a lot more than Glass Onion. I thought this was my ensemble, not murder mystery, but murderous <laughs> island <laughs> film that I really enjoyed over the last. Um, couple of weeks so uh both good but i definitely side with the menu i thought it was excellent yeah i think just slightly i don't think it was a load more better but i thought it was a bit better um and uh and it was a really great film really interesting uh, and something different um and, and to me whenever he finds us in a film i'm very interested to, to watch it Man, straight just, away yeah yeah especially you know. something like this where you can Forgive the uh, pun, but he can really sink his teeth into it, you know. Yeah. It's... You're still hungry? Yes, I am. How hungry? Starved. So there we go. Glass Onion and The Menu. Have you seen these films? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Did we get it right? Did you have different opinions? Do you agree with us? Please let us know. We'd be uh, more than happy to hear from you guys. Um, to see what you thought but yeah I mean of all the films we've watched since we last recorded a podcast and there are lots of films since then these were the two we sort of picked out we wanted to talk about in this podcast Um, but over the last few months Dave we've watched quite a lot of films um, since then any others that you you know quickly just want to reel off that you've enjoyed um, I guess the, the main one I'd uh, you know really shout out. I, I'll be doing a review of this um, in the coming weeks, but uh, Bones and All is one that um, really struck me as a really interesting film. Um, really, really different, really interesting. So um, keep an eye out on the channel because uh, uh, there'll be a review coming shortly for that. Fantastic. I look forward to that. Uh, I'll have to see that film before I watch your review so i'll I'll, i am i am into watching that but again i think another gruesome uh yes foodie film shall we say (laughs) different kind of menu item but yeah um i mean i've i've been tucking into a lot of uh 70s films um that era the sort of new hollywood era um as you know that's like my favorite sort of era of film um, American sort of new Hollywood and there's still quite a lot of films from that period that I hadn't seen so I've been managing to catch up on a few of those uh, so I've seen things like Night Moves with Gene Hackman which was which was really good uh, Atlantic City Burt Lancaster and Susan Sarandon which is 1980 but it still sort of falls into that era yeah brilliant film I'd wanted to see it for years managed to get hold of a copy watched that it was fantastic so yeah, lots of films from that that period that I've been really really enjoying, uh, as long as well as uh, some of the some of the new films that have been coming out. But plenty still to see and um, plenty still to come in twenty twenty three. Absolutely. 
So, talking of 2023, exciting uh, year ahead, but also uh, it's award season, so we will be looking back, of course, um, and they've started to look back over the last 12 months, um, much like we did in our last episode. Um, That's right. So, we've just had the, the Golden Globe Awards, which is kind of the first big picket of the fence uh, along the road to uh, the Oscars being the biggest of the of the award seasons um and obviously we've just been some interesting winners of some of the awards um so i thought we'd have this chit chat about it yeah um first up um i thought we would have a look at uh the supporting uh actors who have won for films um Angela Bassett uh, won Best Supporting Actress for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. But the biggest uh, news, which I thought was really exciting, was that Kiki Kwan won for Everything Everywhere All at Once, which was super exciting. Yeah, it was um, lovely to see him win that. It was. I was so happy. After watching that film, I was so happy for him. And, and then, obviously, all the interviews he was doing about how he kind of went away and came back and all, and yeah. all of that. And we, we loved him as a person and and his performance and all the interviews you saw around him of such a nice guy he is. Yeah. So for him to get this kind of redemption. Did uh, you know as well, obviously back. he was, you know, famous as a child. He was in Indiana Jones, the Temple of Doom, and he thanked Steven Spielberg in his speech. Speech, you yeah. know, never forget where you came from and all that. But he was also in the Goonies and the guy who played Chunk in the Goonies is Kihi Kwan's lawyer. He's an entertainment lawyer nowadays. He doesn't oh, do any right. acting anymore. But he is he's obviously stayed friends with him and he's his representative. And he got him the uh the part in um well negotiated him getting the part in everything everywhere all at once. I thought that was kind of a cool little That's cool, I seen a tweet about it and it was like, oh, Fantastic! Good to know Chunk's still out there. Still out there. He's, a lot, still he's not it. so chunky these days. I don't think he could do the truffle shuffle anymore. But ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, good old Chunk. It's, it's lo- lovely yeah. to see that they kind of stay friends and and it's all come full circle in a way, isn't it? We then had uh, best actress um, for a drama was Kate Blanchett in Tar. Love that film. Fantastic. I speaking about that last time on our 2022 wrap. Thought she was brilliant in it. She's a wonderful actress. And you, you were saying in the last uh, podcast about how great um, Tar is. So it's I, I enjoyed it. it. My personal opinion was it's really good. Um, I think a lot of people thought, oh, it's just going to be boring. But it's not. It's one of those films where once you sort of get into it, he just hooked for a couple of hours and it's a great character piece, really well um, directed. But anyway. And of course, Michelle Yeoh won for F and Everywhere All at Once for Best Actress, Musical or Comedy. Um, it's strange how they split these up with drama and musical it comedy. Is, isn't it is, not it? Yeah, strange. It's, but it's nice F&O because we've got two great winners, two winners. isn't it? You know? Yeah. I'd go with that as well, see. I thought Michelle Yeoh was perfect in that film. She was absolutely wonderful. Um, and it's, again, lovely to see her getting the recognition and the Definitely. accolades um, after all this time. And great for the film to be getting some kind of attention. Big um, time, big time. We had uh, the best actor was uh, won by Austin Butler for Elvis. Yeah, That's cool. the drama category. Yeah. Um, and then two we, days later, Elvis's daughter dies. I know how sad that was, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was um, a shock, that one. It's really only came 54 or something like that. Lisa Marie Presley. Yeah, it's it's really, really sad. And yeah. um but we you know we, we watched Elvis uh and we covered it in our podcast last year in the summer. Mm-hmm. Um We sure and, did. You know, we, we thought it was a great film and we we did we did rave about his performance, how accurate it was to Elvis. So oh, yeah. It's uh, he deserved it. Well he, deserved. He, yeah, yeah. He, he was great. The best director, and then the best film, went to Steven Spielberg and The Fablemans. Did he win both? Did it win he best director both. as well? 
Um, one thing I thought was nice in it is that he uh, mentioned John Cassavetes in it because he was like a runner on uh, one of Cassavetes' early films, like Faces or something. Mm. You know, uh, Spielberg was just trying to, like which the Fablemans is about, in trying to break into the film business. That's where it sort of ends anyway. Uh, and one of the early experience jobs he had unpaid was being a runner on um, John Cassavetes' film, and he mentioned him in the... Uh, in his acceptance speech, and I thought that was great. I have to just say one thing uh, that Quentin said to me when he gave me this award. He said that John Cassavetes would be so proud, and because he said that because I was John Cassavetes' PA on one of his movies. And funnily enough, you know, may as well mention as well, we just released our top five John Cassavetes films on the channel here uh, in the video form, and that links also to... Uh, larger article about John Cassavetes. Um, so worth checking out if you're into independent cinema or just John Cassavetes films in general. Um, go and have a look at that one. Absolutely. But yeah, Fablemans for me was, it wasn't great. It was okay. But I was expecting like a, a Spielberg masterpiece and it wasn't. I didn't think it mm. was. It was good. It was good enough, but there are better films out there. I wouldn't have put that as best film winner. No, I I think it's been, it's been a bit of a controversial choice, really. Um, interestingly, again, because they break this up, it's best film drama that one, and and uh, they have best film musical or comedy. They they split them up at the Golden Globes. So the best film for musical or comedy um, was the Banshees of Inner Sheeran, um, which won against Everything Everywhere All at Once, Glass Onion, Triangle of Sadness, and Babylon. Which is interesting. Out of those films, uh, you know, I've seen two of them, um, but it'd be interesting to go and see what the Banshees of Inner Sheeran is yeah, about. Yeah, we've, got to, we've um, got to check that out. I've seen a lot about that, and it seems to be generally quite positive. Before Oscar season, um, of course, by the time we get to the next uh, show, the Oscars nominations will have been announced. Um, so we will go through the actual nominations then, as we always uh, do, for sure. As we always do. It's interesting. Um, because the film I'm looking forward to the most at the moment, which I think a lot of people are, is The Whale. Um, yes, The definitely. new film with Brendan Fraser. Now, Brendan Fraser was nominated at the Golden Globes right. for Best Actor. He didn't go. He doesn't go, though, does he? He's got... There's a beef. There's a there, beef there. Yes, yeah, so this goes back to the, um, you know, the alleged um, sexual assault from years ago from one of the presidents of the Hollywood Foreign Press. So he said, I don't want to be a hypocrite, so I'm not going to turn up. Um, mm. And I, I, I love his... Um, stance on that. Stance on that, that, you yeah, know, good, he's not going to be a criminal. But in reality, I think that's what made him is he's not one um, because he has then gone and won Best Actor. The Critics' Choice Movie Awards, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he's won best actor at lots of other ones as well. Um, yeah, it looks great. I, I, I'm really keen to see the whale as well. I do uh, think that that looks like a powerful film. So, did you ever see a beached whale on television? Yeah. Yeah. You know, anything we didn't get to see last year, uh, as of yet, we're going to be seeing over the next few months and covering uh, as as we do. That's that's what we do here on uh, More Movies Channel, or we have done for the last couple of years. So, you know. That's what it's going to be, isn't it? Making a list of things that we haven't yeah. watched yet, going back to them. I think maybe this year we might be a little bit better off than we've been. Like, for, for example, last year just seemed to be everything that was nominated. No, we haven't seen it. We haven't seen go it. And yeah. watch it. We've got to go and watch it. Whereas, obviously, we know with things like Elvis, Top Gun, Tar, things like this, we've seen a lot of them um, so far. But um, yeah, The Whale's definitely high on the uh, watch list. And. Um, Avatar, not so much. No. I mean, you hated the first Avatar anyway. I didn't mind the first one, but for all, you know, from yeah. all I've heard about the sequel, no, I'm not going to waste my time. No, from everything I've heard, um, I kind of watched some of the Mark Commode's reviews and stuff like that. I hated the original, and looking at the new one, I think the people I respect the opinion of have basically said it's rubbish. And um, I've seen a lot of people saying it's great online but their focus seems to be oh it looks very pretty and it's great world building um that's not enough though is it that's not enough they don't mention story or anything like that and um 
I did see one comment uh, from someone saying, oh, the problem is every scene is introduced with like a 45 second establishing shot because <laughs> it, it's just constant. Oh, how pretty we've got this stuff going mm. on. And I thought that's going to bore me shitless probably. So yeah. uh, it doesn't sound that great. So I'm not too interested in, uh, in watching it, to be honest. No. You see that? Once they get together, they're not interested in anything. And that's it, really. That's it this week. I think we can wrap up there, Dave. That's it. Exciting times ahead. Absolutely. 2023 is upon us. So that's just enough time to uh, mention to you to check out our website, moremovies.co.uk. Lots of film reviews on there, top five articles, articles about all sorts uh, of movies we've watched and we uh, are enthusiastic about. Um, So there's plenty to see there. I've just mentioned we did a top five John Cassavetes video, uh, which is linked to one of the articles on the website. We've done a lot of top five from directors a lot of different directors over the last couple of years so that's one of the articles you want to go and check it out it's all there links are in the description below and if you enjoy what we're doing over here you can support us over at buymeacoffee.com we've got a page there where you can buy us a cappuccino or a latte help keep the lights on and support us all um or you can pop over to patreon and you can subscribe and become a patron of more movies for you and we really appreciate all the donations and support that we get from you guys it really really is appreciated absolutely thanks very much to michelle to shane and to chris b we love you guys thanks very much for being patrons anyway let us know your thoughts in the comments guys always great to hear from you thanks very much to everybody who does comment and like on our uh, youtube videos we do really appreciate it we love watching your content too so keep it coming and until next time keep watching more movies that's it for this video let us know your thoughts in the comments down below and remember to like share and subscribe right here on youtube for more film reviews and articles check out our website moremovies.co.uk and join us on social media at more movies for you that's on facebook twitter instagram tiktok all across the board you know the score if you enjoy what we do please consider supporting us at buymeacoffee.com or join us on one of our packages on Patreon. The links are in the description down below. And for more film-tastic content, click one of the buttons on screen now.